number of announcements that start on page 17 in your service bulletin. I want to be sure you notice on page uh, 18 the sacred ground announcement. Deborah is here and is a leader of it. Um, Dick and Marty are leading it. The Wattses have done it. Lots of people can tell you about it if you have questions. There are uh, flyers I think people can take home. The signups are open for this, so if you want to do it, sign up as soon as you can. Um, we have a ch brief chalice server training after the service. Our intention is next Sunday to begin offering the chalice. Um, so if you would, whether you've done this before or not, please come because we're tweaking things a little. They'll be a little different than they used to be. So even if you are formerly a chalice server, it'd be great for you to come um, kind of get a refresher course. Next Sunday will be our last class in the Ways to Pray class between the services, and please come to that. If you bought gifts for the um, Sudanese Christmas Project, they need to be back here by noon, or if you didn't buy gifts but you can make a financial donation so that the gifts that weren't taken can be purchased by volunteers, um, you can make a check out to St. Elizabeth's but with Sudanese Christmas Project in the metal line, and um, they'll be used for that. Please come back at 3 o'clock for our very fun Christmas party where we're teaching some crafts for those who like to do that. We'll have a cookie swap. I've made a new fudge recipe that is awesome. So you have to <laughs> and um, Christmas carols. So we'll be doing caroling with Dollar and Walker um, in here. There's also a sign up uh, at the table in the parish hall, sign ups for poinsettias for Christmas and lots of other stuff. Does anyone else have an announcement that we need to make out loud or draw attention to? Change in the postlude and there will be carol and bells. And when we do the open hymn, it will be verses one through three. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, I invite you to stand and we'll start uh, with the opening hymn on the front of our bulletin and let us worship God together. <clears throat>
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt you over, your, over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors, oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. A canticle nine, which we will be say together this morning, page on family page nine of your bulletin. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his peace known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, bring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. second lesson is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, 
I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? 
And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. The one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. The chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And so with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May change bring hope. May hope bring love. May love bring change. Amen. Amen. Now, I have a confession. There are going to be huge chunks of this sermon that were stolen from other people. So, if you could raise your hand, if you've ever heard of a radio storyteller named Paul Harvey. Great. Now, if you've heard of him, have you heard his Christmas story called The Man and the Birds? One or two. Awesome. If so, well, just know that I'm going to read the whole thing in a little bit. And I'm hoping I can get through it without tearing up. Fair warning. When I was growing up, every once in a while in a car ride, it would coincide with Mr. Harvey's radio broadcast. And it was aptly named The Rest of the Story, where he'd fill in the blanks on something that you thought you knew, and it was always fascinating, it was very human, always a much deeper look. And his voice was a voice for radio, as you guys know. Rich, baritone, but not perfect. It's scratchy, it was distinctive. And no matter what you were listening to, changing from channel to channel, you'd know his broadcast, and you would stop the moment you heard his voice. And at the time, now, I didn't think of him as a Christian person, but more of an entertainer who thought about things that were interesting, just like I did. He was certainly not like the obvious Christian radio guys, like Billy Graham or Ernest Angley, who convinced me to put my hands on my TV set to be healed. And you could spot those guys a mile away. And I quickly changed the channel whenever they came. But I thought of Mr. Harvey the way I thought about Fred Rogers, and Miss Sally of Romper Room, and Captain Kangaroo, or John Wall. They were just good people whose paths crossed mine on radio and or television. But I know now that there were actually Christian messages behind their generosity, their curiosity, their hard work, their earnestness, they had a big impact on what I thought and knew about being a good person. But mostly, you could imagine that they led peaceful, purposeful, full lives without violence or anger or fear. But it wasn't God-filled. That's not the way I thought about it then. It wasn't God-filled because the God of my childhood, I was used to hearing about a God who was angry all the time, a judging God, a hard-to-please God. My, the God of my childhood is not the God I know now. Mm -hmm. Mostly that's because in the Old Testament, which is what we got a lot of, we read about exile, we read about kings, we read about battles, about displacing people, about conquering people, about being conquered and sent into exile, being brought back. Philistines, Abimelites, Hittites, everything. Frequently about an angry God. A vengeful God was who I heard most when I was little. A God that would lead us into battle. A God of us versus them. And there was always a them to battle with us. And that God, when I was growing up, was hard for me to have a relationship with. A pillar of smoke by day, a pillar of fire by night. That God had laws. That God would kill you for reaching out to keep the ark from falling over. 
The God of the Old Testament is the kind of God that an evil and corrupt pope would say wanted us to go on a crusade. The God of the Old Testament, in my mind, was why we used to burn witches. It was why we, why we displaced American Indians. Why we took from them their culture was because of that kind of a God. I was scared of that God. And based on where we are now, I think many of us are still scared of that God. Because think about it. In our human history, since the resurrection, we continue to fight wars over boundaries, over resources, over perceived scarcities. Even now, our country spends more preparing for war and selling weapons of war to other countries than we spend on feeding our own people, healing their illnesses, both physical and mental. We spend more on bombs and bombers than bridges and bypass. We are suspicious of Medicaid expansion. We are suspicious of defunding the police because what we really want to be saying is we should be refunding housing, education, wealth creation. We are still a vengeful people following an Old Testament God of justice. So think about it. Think about this really hard. In your heart of hearts, in your daily life, as you walk about town, when someone does something evil, do you want justice? Or do you want rehabilitation? Do you want that bad person to be given a hug, to be listened to, to be encouraged and corrected and understood? Or do you want that person to be punished, locked away, separated from us? until they can realize their own mistakes on their own. Do you actually believe in forgiveness and second chances? Do you actually believe in an infinite number of second chances? Or do you believe in shield and outer darkness? We have a lot of noise and fear and finger pointing. We have a lot of Chuck Norris and Bruce Willis. <laughs> We don't have a lot of peace. We don't have a lot of Fred Rogers and Paul Harvey. And this is how we came to the third Sunday of Advent. In today's readings, we don't see war or kings being overthrown or sacrificing or tears or anguish. We see rejoicing in our readings today. Now there are echoes, if you wanted to look into it, of the deeds God has done, and most of the deeds God has done is war and just and conquering. But not today. Today we read about the rejoicing. And even John's harsh words lead us towards peace. Think about it. How, does he, how did he do that? What does he say? Let's, think, let's read it again. He who has two coats must give one to someone who has none. Where we see inequity today we are to share what we have. When John heard from the soldiers and the tax collectors, people who used threats of violence and extortion, people who took what they could take, instead, what did he say? He insisted that they be content with what they were given. And you know what? It worked. You could almost imagine the lines of fear and anger and worry smooth away. The nodding of heads in agreement that the relief that they could stop being that kind of person. Their tenseness in their shoulders, I imagine, disappeared. Their fists unclenched. They quit looking over their shoulders. You could almost imagine that they realized that yes, there is another way. I've been on the wrong path. You're telling me something I've always wanted to know. Praise be and thanks be to God. So in this third week of Advent, let's think about why Jesus was sent to us. <laughs> when the people listening to John were talking about the Messiah, what were they waiting for? Why did John's message of repenting and turning towards peace strike such a chord in them? More importantly, why do we crave 
that same kind of peace now? Why are we looking for someone to tell us what to change so that we could be less fearful, less angry, more trusting, less willing to fight and put others away, so willing to see others as others? What are we hoping for? So that we can start seeing God in each other. So that we can relax our fists, relax our shoulders, smooth our brows. What are we waiting for so that we too can have God's peace which passes all understanding? All right, set it in. Get comfy. We're built for stories, and I'm about to tell you a story. <coughs> The man I'm going to tell you about was not a Scrooge. He was a kind, decent, mostly good man. Generous to his family, and upright in his dealings with other men. But he just didn't believe in all of that incarnation stuff that the church has proclaimed at Christmas time. It just didn't make sense, and he was too honest to pretend otherwise. He just couldn't swallow the Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. So, he told his wife, I'm truly sorry to distress you, but I'm not going with you to church this Christmas Eve. He said he'd feel like a hypocrite, and that he would much rather just stay at home, but that he would wait up for her. So he stayed, and they went to the midnight service. Shortly after the family drove away in the car, snow began to fall, and he went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier. And then he went back to his fireside chair and began to read his newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound, and then another, and then another. <laughs> At first he thought someone was, must be throwing snowballs against the living room window. But he went to the front door to investigate. He found a flock of birds huddled outside, miserable in the snow. They'd been caught in the storm. And on a desperate search for shelter, they had tried to fly through his large landscape window. And that's what had been making the sound. Well, they couldn't let the poor creatures just lie there and freeze. So he remembered. There was a barn where his children stabled their pony. That would provide a warm shelter. All he'd have to do was to get the birds into the shelter. So quickly, he put on a coat and he tramped through the deepening snow to the barn, and he opened the doors wide and turned on a light so the birds would know the way in. But the birds did not come in. So he figured that food would entice them. So he hurried back to the house and fetched some breadcrumbs, and he sprinkled them on the snow, making a trail of breadcrumbs to the yellow-lighted, wide-open doorway of the stable. But to his dismay, birds ignored the breadcrumbs. The birds continued to flop around helplessly in the snow, and he tried catching them, but he couldn't. He tried shooing them into the barn by walking around and waving his arms, and instead they scattered in every direction, every direction except the warm, lighted barn. And that's when he realized that they were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I am a strange and terrifying creature. And if only I could think of some way to let them know that they can trust me, that I'm not trying to hurt them, but to help them. But how? Any move he made tended to frighten and confuse them. They just wouldn't follow. They wouldn't be led or shooed because they feared him. And he thought to himself, if only I could be a bird and mingle with them and speak their language. And then I could tell them not to be afraid. And then I could show them the way to the safe, warm, and to the safe, warm barn. But I would have to be one of them so they could see and hear and understand. At that moment, the church bells began to ring. The sound reached his ears above the sounds of the wind. And he stood there listening to the bells. Adeste Fidelis listening to the bells, pealing the glad tidings of Christmas. And he sank to his knees in the snow. Jesus came because apparently we are lost. And there is no other way for us to know what God is and to hear God 
except by hearing and seeing God in human flesh. Advent, in my mind, is a pause. It's for us to regather ourselves. It is not really about waiting, because honestly the time for waiting is over. We've been shown the way. There is no need to wait. If you have two coats, give one of them away. If you get what you want from oppressing others, stop it. You have more than enough. Be content. And if you listen to people who are trying to scare you or rile you up, remember that they are full of themselves while you are trying instead to empty yourself. And if you listen to people who are trying to make it about us and them, remember that you are full of love and compassion, and they are empty and lifeless. Remember that violence and hatred and selfishness and oppression and abuse is the way things were. It does not have to be the way things are, now that we know the rest of the story. And by the way, thanks to modern technology and dedicated nerds, Paul Harvey's The Rest of the Story broadcasts are now a podcast. And I'm a new subscriber. I can't wait. See you out there.
in joyful expectation of his coming to our aid, we pray to Jesus. Come to your church as Lord and Judge. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, Karen, our rector, and Dick, our deacon. We pray especially for our prayer ministries, Centering Prayer, and the Order of St. Luke. Help us to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing for your kingdom. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your world as King of the Nations. We pray for our President, Congress, and Supreme Court of the United States, and all in positions of authority around the world. Before you, rulers will stand in silence. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to the suffering as the Savior and Comforter. We pray for those whose lives have been destroyed by the tornadoes. We pray for Loretta, Edward, Marty, Bob, Mabel Lou, Mackenzie, Noah, Stephen, Jan, the Collins, and those we now name, either out loud or in our Break into our lives, where we struggle with sickness and distress, and set us free to serve you forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to us as shepherd and guardian of our souls. Give us with all the faithful departed a share in your victory over evil and death. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come from heaven, Lord Jesus, with power and great glory. Lift us up to meet you that with Elizabeth of Palestine, Elizabeth of Hungary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints and angels, we may live and reign with you in your new creation. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom on earth as in heaven where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. 
thanks come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. We continue on page 11 in your bulletin, or if you'd like to follow along in the Book of Common Prayer, we're on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass 
against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
privilege to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming and power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you. 